Today we want to talk about peripheral blood and hematopoiesis. Uh, the first part will be on peripheral blood, where we will identify the cells, the functions, and characteristics of these cells of peripheral blood, as well as platelets. Part two has to do with hematopoiesis. We will look at the different developmental uh, cells to identify those and to look at characteristics of the nucleus and cytoplasm in the developmental process to produce red blood cells and white blood cells. Peripheral blood and hematopoiesis. Part one, blood. The objectives are to examine the blood smear and distinguish each of the formed elements to describe the function of granocytes, agranocytes, platelets, and erythrocytes, and to know the relative cell counts for each of these formed elements. Now blood is going to be very, uh, very useful as far as diagnostic value. In fact, it's the most tissue observed uh, in the medical profession. Uh, there's three different types of information that is gathered from the blood. One is identifying the nature of the disease. Is it viral? Is it bacterial? Is it parasitic? You can tell by the different uh, changes in the concentration of different cells that are in the blood. Also, you can follow the course of the disease. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? And also, it allows you to evaluate the effectiveness of a treatment. Is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Now, blood is composed of cells, red blood cells, because that hematocrit, about 45% of the blood. And uh, <clears throat> above the red blood cells uh, is a little buffy coat, and that's the white blood cells, and that's how it got its name, white. Uh, white blood cells are located there. And then above there, you have plasma uh, at the top. Now, uh, liquid part of blood is about 55% of the blood, that's the plasma, uh, and uh, uh, it's composed of water, albumin, albumin helps hold osmotic pressure and neutralizes uh, proteases, so it prevents uh, enzymatic damage. It also has globulin antibodies, IgG, IgE, etc. The antibodies are located in the plasma also has transferrin for iron, copper, and zinc transport. It has chylomicrons, which are lipid components that come from the intestine, uh, that come through the blood. Uh, and um, so they're in the blood plasma, and you have low-density lipofusin, lipoprotein for uh, cholesterol removal. Uh, it also contains clotting factors. You have uh, fibrinogen, prothrombin, thromboblastin, uh, and thrombin, the different things that are important for coagulation of blood. Also, it has hormones to direct uh, activities. Hormones are produced from one place, transported by blood to another to the target cells. Also, it has chemotactic factors, which attract immune cells to alert immune cells where they should go. Uh, also, a serum. Serum is a yellow liquid formed from clotted blood. In other words, serum is a plasma minus the clotting factors. And so you can see the clear yellowish uh, liquid there, which is a serum. Definition and function of blood. Uh, blood is a fluid tissue composed of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Uh, the function of blood is transportation of cells and fluid. That's what it does. Uh, the red blood cells uh, carry oxygen too and obtain carbon dioxide from tissue. And here you can see the different uh, blood vessels. This is uh, uh, venous blood. And the lungs, uh, the blood picks up the oxygen in the lungs and then it distributes that oxygen in the capillaries to return back uh, to the lungs one more time. Now, the function of blood is transportation of cells and fluid, as we mentioned. We have white blood cells, which have to do with the body defenses. We have plasma. They provide nutrients to tissue and, and waste removal, and they hold uh, water in the plasma with the albumin. Hormones and other informational mediators 
are also in the plasma as we've indicated. Platelets prevent the loss of transportation. That is, a, uh, they're able to clog up uh, a bleeding place uh, and uh, and able to uh, to prevent the loss of blood. Now here in the book we uh, see a, a nice little summary of blood, the composition of blood, uh, the, the cells of blood. So in summary, the composition and cells, blood plasma is a liquid component of blood that holds the uh, blood cells uh, versus the serum, which is without the blood clotting factors. Serum has no clotting factors. Uh, uh, plasma has clotting factors uh, in it. And here we can see some of the cells. There's platelets, and then some of the cells are neutrophils, the monocytes, a little larger, eosinophils, uh, and, and basophils. So we have different cells. You've got the granulocytes, and those are the uh, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophils. And you have the non-granulocytes. Those are the monocytes and lymphocytes uh, that, that we have there. So if you see it in slide 21, the blood smear, here's a lymphocyte, a little larger than the red blood cells, a little bit of cytoplasm, not much, mostly spherical nucleus. Eosinophil, big eosinophilic granules, larger than the red blood cells. Uh, monocyte is even yet a larger cell. Um, and then you have the neutrophil. Uh, which has a kind of clear uh, cytoplasm, kind of gray cytoplasm, a lobulated nucleus like the lobulated nucleus of the eosinophil. Uh, the basophil also has a lobulated nucleus, that is, it's got one nucleus, but it's got different lobes. And you can't really see the nucleus because the granules stay above the nucleus, so you can't see them. And it has uh, blue granules as opposed to uh, um, these uh, orange granules. <coughs> And then we have platelets. And in the book, it has a nice little summary uh, of the different things. This is a study question, and it shows you that the neutrophils are most numerous, or lymphocytes are next, and a very few basophils. And it shows you whether they have granules or not, and then also the lifespan of these. And note the lymphocytes could be for hours to years. Monocytes, hours to years. Uh, and some things are quite short. Others could, are quite varied. If we look at a blood smear, uh, we can see these cells here are neutrophils uh, in through here, a lymphocyte uh, in through there, monocyte, another lymphocyte. These little guys here are platelets. Uh, and we have uh, erythrocytes, the red blood cells we see here, and the bulk of ones that we see there, a couple of neutrophils uh, in view. Now, the formed elements of blood, that is a non-fluid, cellular, and, and function of blood, we have the erythrocytes, and that has to do with uh, oxygen and CO2 transport. We also have neutrophils. We have to do with uh, attacking bacteria. We have eosinophils, and the eosinophils are involved in inflammatory process and parasitic infection. Basophils release histamine and other inflammation mediators. Monocytes are part of the mononuclear phagocytic system and they become macrophages. Monocytes is what holds your tattoo in on your skin. Uh, also form elements are your lymphocytes and the lymphocytes have different function. You get the B lymphocytes which generates antibodies whenever the B lymphocytes transform to plasma cells. T cells or killer cells, virus infected cells, uh, natural killer cells, tumors, um, and cytotoxic uh, cells, and uh, platelets for blood clotting. So erythrocyte is a minute corpuscle, no nucleus, red, and, and it carries iron. Iron is actually what makes it red. Uh, that is, uh, iron has to do with carrying oxygen and CO2 derived from the bone marrow, which we'll talk about later on in the presentation. A nucleated cells in mammals. Some animals do still have a nucleus in their cell. All of them started out with, with nuclei and nuclei removed uh, in mammals. Uh, quite a, a large number, about 45% of blood uh, is erythrocytes. 
uh, and uh, you have a lot of red blood cells and it can be higher at higher elevations you can get a higher concentration and higher ablation uh, that's why our, our Olympic team uh, practices uh, in uh, uh, Colorado Springs Colorado uh, because it's a high elevation and they have thick blood so peripheral blood smear as we can see here uh, here's a basophil here another basophil right there a couple of neutrophils basophil neutrophil eosinophil different ones the basic function neutrophil as I mentioned bacteria and fungi eosinophil for parasites uh, basophil histamine inflammatory response lymphocytes B and T natural killer cells monocytes uh, only migrate through blood and then become macrophage in the tissue here we see a couple more monocytes lymphocytes uh, in blood and here we see a lymphocyte uh, this is in blood smear but for those a little bit of cytoplasm and see a little rim of cytoplasm uh, and here's the nucleus nuclear envelope nuclear pores that we can see in this a cell that's most a spherical nucleus with uh, a little rim of cytoplasm and it mostly just sits around like that until uh, it gets stimulated when it does in this case it makes a plasma cell and so that from here to there it get blasted or become a, a plasma cell with all this rough in the plasma reticulum and antibody production or if it's a T cell it may become active cell and a killer cell so here we see uh, the cartwheel shape uh, nucleus characteristic of what we see when we look at in the tissue this is uh, in, in intestine this is a lamina propria that we're looking at a nice uh, group of cytoplasm which we see here is rough in the plasma reticulum may have a bluish tint to it but we see this cartwheel nucleus and certainly we see different uh, structures in there which are the condensation of the nucleus uh, uh, the chromatin heterochromatin are located around around an outside of the nucleus and here we see uh, the EM of blood smear. Uh, these are lymphocytes. And when you look at lymphocytes, you realize that really it's not a spherical nucleus um, at all. But nevertheless, it looks spherical at the low uh, magnification. These are neutrophils, monocyte, uh, and uh, some of these are platelets as well. So if we look a little higher mag. This is a monocyte with the organelles going through there. Uh, lymphocyte uh, here, a large lymphocyte. Here's a lymphocyte. Uh, these are neutrophils, which have two types of granules. You have the specific granules, which are dumbbell shaped, uh, and then you have the non specific granules. Here we see a couple of neutrophils uh, in blood. Liability nucleus, it looks like two nuclei there. Of course, it's only one uh, that's still attached. Uh, and here we see more neutrophils, uh, lymphocytes. Uh, here in the view that we're supposed to look at, this is a libellated nucleus, uh, some uh, specific granules and azeophilic granules. These are specific granules, the dumbbell shaped uh, granules. Basophil uh, has no crystalline core uh, in, um, in its cytoplasm as does eosinophils. So again, we can see uh, neutrophils here and here, uh, and we can see the kind of dumbbell shape. Uh, specific granules these smaller granules are the specific granules so uh, you have uh, azeophilic granules which is mostly what we see they have acid phosphatase in them and they also have a, a basic protein a protein that kills bacteria helps uh, get rid of bacteria they last for a short time in blood only a little bit of time to the transit uh, in blood these eosinophils are this is eosinophil here and here um, and it also has a major basic protein which kills a parasitic worm so this is eosinophil different from the neutrophil uh, uh, common uh, in the lamina propria of connective of uh, GI tract and respiratory tract anything that interacts with the outside environment is going to have eosinophils attracted by uh, chemotactic factors that give off by mast cells and basophils so other cells attract them to the site. Rowan parasitic disease and allergies. 
Now, the neutrophils and eosinophils or basophils all have specific granules. Uh, the neutrophils also have non-specific granules, a typical lysosomal granule, but these are the enzymes which are located. The granules, the big granules that you see in the eosinophils and basophils are the specific granules, as opposed to uh, the neutrophil, these are dumbbell shaped, and these are more uh, spherical ones. Here we see a eosinophil, uh, here, here, uh, and you can see the granules have a crystalline core, so it's different from the basophil. See the crystal structure inside the core of the granules that we see there, lobulated nucleus. The basophil is at least numerous white blood cell. We can see it has no crystalline core in the granules. Um, it has meta, uh, meta chromasia, that is, uh, it has heparin in there and it has different colors. So if you look at this, you can see it, it ranges in the colors of the granules. Um, may be induced to degranulate uh, like a mast cell, not sure. Specific receptors uh, for IgE, immunoglobulin, uh, it can be 20 fold increase in the person with hay fever, asthma, uh, or allergic uh, problems. Basophils, histamine, that's responsible for the itching. Um, whenever you have an immune response, also it increases permeability for edema or swelling associated with that. Your eyes get swollen whenever you're exposed to something. Uh, basophils migrate to the dermis. It's a cell-mediated immunity uh, is, is what, what we have here as opposed to a humoral immunity which is produced with antibodies. So here we see the basophil again, uh, and then we have platelets. Platelets have, uh, for clotting of blood, and platelets uh, they have primary aggregation of the platelets and they form a plug attached to the damaged tissue. Secondary aggregation, alpha and beta granules induce further aggregation so they, uh, they call on their friends uh, and blood coagulation, cascade of events we'll talk about. Then you have a clot uh, retraction uh, uh, in there and then the clot removal is what we have. So a typical you cut yourself, you bleed, you clot, you have a scab, scab retracts, scab removed. So a uh, role of platelets in stopping, first of all, they produce uh, serotonin. Serotonin is a vasoconstrictor and it reduces the, the caliber of the blood vessel to reduce the, the flowing whenever you're bleeding. It also produces a thromboblastin. Now thromboblastin, these other enzymes are just floating around, but thromboblastin, whenever it goes in there, it induces a cascade, which ultimately ends up in fibrin. And that's what we see there. Fibrin polymerizes and produces the clot. That's what the clot is. Uh, and we can see the fibrin uh, clot, which traps some red blood cells in there. So have many meta, uh, platelets have many metabolic functions of cells, but they don't have nuclei uh, as a rule. Uh, when uh, exposed to damaged cells, they stick, stick to one another. They release uh, ADP uh, inside, which causes other platelets to come there, uh, and they produce thromboblastin, which makes a net, the net that we see here, uh, which is the basis of the clot. So in summer, summary, platelets or thromboplastin uh, nu uh, enucleate in mammals. Uh, they you have zones, you have the, uh, the, the hydromere, you have the granulomere on the inside. Uh, some serotonin vasoconstriction, uh, and they're produced by the megakaryocytes in blood, and that will last for a few times. So here we see red blood cells, uh, white blood cells, as well as some red blood cells, and that ends part one of the presentation.